19. Look, cried the centipede, just as they were finishing their meal. Look at that funny thing, black thing, gliding through the water over them. They all swung around to look. There are two of them, said Miss Spider. There are lots of them, said the ladybug. What are they, asked the earthworm, getting worried. They must be some kind of fish, the old grasshopper said. Perhaps they have come along, just they want to say hello. They are sharks, cried the earthworm. I'll bet you anything, they're sharks and they came along to eat us up. What absolute rot, the centipede said. But his voice seemed suddenly to have become a little shaky. And he wasn't laughing. I'm positive they're sharks, said the earthworm. I just know they're sharks. And in fact, so did everybody else. But they were frightened to admit it. There was a short silence. They all peered down anxiously at the sharks who were cruising slowly around and around the peach. But just assuming they're sharks, the centipede said, there still can't possibly be any danger if we stay up here. But even as he spoke, one of those thin black fins suddenly changed direction and came cutting swiftly through the water, right up to the side of the peach itself. The shark paused and stared up at the company with small, evil eyes. Go away, they shouted. Go away, you filthy beast. Slowly, almost lazily, the shark opened his mouth and made a lunge at the peach. They all watched aghast, and now, as though at a single from the leader, all the other sharks came swimming in toward the peach, and they clustered around it and began to attack it furiously. There must have been 20 or 30 of them at least, all pushing and fighting and lashing their tails and churning the water into a froth. Panic and pandemonium broke out immediately on top of the peach. Oh, we are finished now, cried Miss Spider, wringing her feet. They will eat up the whole peach, and then there'll be nothing left for us to stand on, and they'll start on us. She's right, shouted the ladybug. We are lost forever. Oh, I don't want to be eaten, wailed the earthworm, but they will take me first of all because I'm so fat and juicy and I have no bones. Is there nothing we can do? asked the ladybug, appealing to James. Surely you can think of a way out of this. Suddenly, they were all looking at James. Think, begged Miss Spider. Think, James, think. Come on, said the centipede. Come on, James. There must be something we can do. Their eyes waited upon him, tense, anxious, pathetically hopeful. Chapter 20. There is something I believe we might try, James Henry Trotter said slowly. I'm not saying it will work. Tell us, cried the earthworm, tell us quick. We'll try anything you say, said the centipede, but hurry, hurry. Be quiet. Let the boy speak, said the ladybug. Go on, James. They all moved a little closer to him. There was a longish pause. Go on, they cried frantically, go on. And all the time, while they were waiting, they could hear the sharks threshing around in the water below them. It was enough to make anyone frantic. Come on, James, the ladybug said, coaxing him. I'm, I'm afraid it's no good after all, James murmured. I'm terribly sorry, he said, shaking his head. I forgot. We don't have any string. We'll need hundreds of yards of string to make this work. What sort of string, asked the old green grasshopper sharply. Any sort, just as long as it's strong. But my dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We've got all you want. How? Where? The silkworm, cried the old green grasshopper. Didn't you ever notice the silkworm? She's still downstairs. She never moves. She just lies there, sleeping all day long. But we can easily wake her up and make her spin. And what about me, may I ask? I can spin just as well as any silkworm, said Miss Spider. What's more, I can spin patterns. Can you make enough between you, said James? As much as you want. And there's the silkworm. And quickly? Of course, of course. And would it be strong? The strongest there is. It's as thick as your finger. But why? What are you going to do? I'm going to lift this peach clear out of the water, James announced firmly. You are mad, cried the earthworm. It's our only chance. The boy's crazy. He's joking. Go on, James. How are you going to do it, said the ladybug. Skyhooks, I suppose, jeered the centipede. Seagulls, James answered calmly. This place is full of seagulls. Look up there. They all looked up and saw a great mass of seagulls wheeling around and round in the sky. I'm going to take a long silk string, James went on, and I'm going to loop one end of it around a seagull's neck. Then I'm going to tie the other end to a stem of the peach. He pointed to the peach stem, which was standing up like a short, thick mass in the middle of the deck. 
Then I'm going to get another seagull and do the same thing again. Then another, then another. Ridiculous, they shouted. Absurd, poppycock, balderdash, madness. The old green grasshopper said, how can a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up in the air? And all of us as well. It would take hundreds, thousands. There's no shortage of seagulls, James answered. Look for yourself. We'll probably need 400, 500, 600, maybe even 1,000. I don't know. I shall simply go on hooking them up to the stem until we have enough to lift us. They'll be bound to lift us in the end. It's like balloons. You give someone enough balloons to hold, I mean really enough, then up he goes. And a seagull has far more lifting power than a balloon. If only we have the time to do it. If only we were not sunk first by those awful sharks. You're absolutely off your head, said the earthworm. How on earth do you suppose that you are going to fly up there yourself and catch it? The boy got it. Let him finish, said the ladybug. Go on, James. How would you do it? With bait. Bait? What sort of bait? With a worm, of course. Seagulls love worms. Didn't you know that? And lucky for us, we have here the biggest, fattest, pinkest, juiciest earthworm in the whole world. Stop right there. Quite enough, said the earthworm. Go on, the other said. Go on. The seagulls have already spotted him, James continued. That's why there's so many of them circling around. But they daren't come down to get him while all the rest of us are standing here. So this is what? Stop, cried the earthworm. Stop, stop, stop. I won't have it. I refuse. I, I, be quiet, said the centipede, and mind your own business. I like that. My dear earthworm, you're going to be eaten anyway. So what difference does it make whether it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it. Why don't we hear what the plan is first, said the old green grasshopper. I don't give a hoot what the plan is, cried the earthworm. I'm not going to be pecked to death by a bunch of seagulls. You will be a martyr, said the centipede. I shall respect you for the rest of my life. So will I, said Miss Spider, and your name will be in all the newspapers. Earthworm gives life to save friends. But he won't have to give his life, James told him. Now listen to me. This is what we'll do. Chapter 21. Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried the old green grasshopper when James had explained his plan. The boy's a genius, the centipede announced. Now I can keep my boots on after all. Oh, I shall be pecked to death, wailed the poor earthworm. Of course you won't. I know, I know I will. And I won't even be able to see them coming at me because I have no eyes. James went over and put an arm gently around the earthworm's shoulders. I won't let them touch you, he said. I promise I won't. But we have to hurry. Look down there. There were more sharks than ever now around the peach. The water was boiling with them. There must have been 90 or 100 sharks at least. And to the travelers up on top, it certainly seemed as though the peach were sinking lower and lower and lower into the water. Action stations, James shouted. Jump to it. There's not a moment to lose. He was the captain now, and everyone knew it. They would do whatever he told them. All hands below deck except Earthworm, he ordered. Yes, yes, they said eagerly as they scuttled to the tunnel entrance. Come on, let's hurry. And you, Centipede, James shouted. Hop downstairs and get that silkworm to work at once. Tell her to spin as she has never spun before. Our lives depend on it. And the same applies to you, Miss Spider. Hurry on down. Start spinning. Chapter 22. In a few minutes, everything was ready. It was very quiet now on the top of the peach. There was nobody in sight. Nobody except the earthworm. One half of the earthworm, looking like a great, thick, juicy, pink sausage, lay innocently in the sun for all the seagulls to see. The other half of him was dangling down the tunnel. And there's the earthworm. James was crouching close beside the earthworm in the tunnel entrance just below the surface, waiting for the first seagull. He had a loop of silk string in his hand. The old green grasshopper and the ladybug were further down the tunnel, holding onto the earthworm's tail, ready to pull him quickly out of danger as soon as James gave the word. And far below, in the great hollow stone of the peach, the glowworm was lighting up the room so that the two spinners, the silkworm, and Miss Spider could see what they were doing. The centipede was down there too, exhorting them both frantically to greater efforts. And every now and again, James could hear his voice coming up faintly from the depths, shouting, spin, silkworm, spin, you great, great lazy brute, faster, 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 or we'll throw you to the sharks. Here comes the first seagull, whispered James. Keep still, earthworm, keep still. The rest of you, get ready to pull. Please, 
don't let it spike me, begged the earthworm. I won't, I won't. Shh. Out of the corner of one eye, James watched the seagull as it came swooping down toward the earthworm. And then suddenly, it was so close that he could see its black, small eyes, its curved beak, and the beak was open, ready to grab a nice piece of flesh out of the earthworm's back. Pull, shouted James. The old green grasshopper and the ladybug gave the earthworm's tail an enormous tug. And like magic, the earthworm disappeared into the tunnel. At the same time, up went James's hand, and the seagull flew right into the loop of silk that he was holding out. The loop, which had been cleverly made, tightened just the right amount, but not too much, around its neck, and the seagull was captured. Hooray! shouted the green grasshopper, peering out of the tunnel. Well done, James. Up flew the seagull with James, paying out the silk string as it went. He gave it about 50 yards and then tied the string to the stem of the peach. Next one, he shouted, jumping back in the tunnel. Up you get again, earthworm. Bring up some more silk, centipede. Oh, I don't like this at all, wailed the earthworm. It only just missed me. And I even felt the wind on my back as it went swishing past. Shh, whispered James. Keep still. Here comes another one. So they did it again, and again, and again, and again. And the seagulls kept coming. And James caught them one after the other and tethered them to the peach's stem. 100 seagulls, he shouted, wiping the sweat from his face. Keep going, they cried. Keep going, James. 200 seagulls, 300 seagulls, 400 seagulls. The sharks, as though sensing that they were in danger of losing their prey, were hurling themselves at the peach more furiously than ever. The peach was sinking lower and lower into the water. 500 seagulls, James shouted. Silkworm says she's running out of silk, yelled the centipede from below. She says she can't keep it up much longer, nor can Miss Spider. Tell them they've got to, James answered. They can't stop now. We're lifting, someone shouted. No, we're not. I can feel it. Put on another seagull, quick. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Here's one coming right now. This was the 501st seagull, and the moment that James caught it and tethered it to the stem with all the others, the whole enormous peach suddenly started rising up slowly out of the water. Look out, here we go. Hold on, boys. But then it stopped, and there it hung. It hovered, it swayed, but it went no higher. The bottom it was just touching the water. It was like a delicately balanced scale that needed only the tiniest push to tip it one way or the other. One more will do it, shouted the old green grasshopper, looking out of the tunnel. We're almost there. And now came the big moment. Quickly, the 502nd seagull was caught and harnessed to the peach's stem. And then suddenly, but slowly, majestically, like some fabulous golden balloon, all the seagulls straining at the strings above, the giant peach rose up, dripping out of the water, and began climbing towards the heavens.